Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll take a look at how you can create a dynamic showcase of your client list using the client's carousel widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. With it, you can create endlessly looping lists of your clients. You can handpick how many of them you want to show in the carousel and decide if you want to use images or text or both at the same time. Besides that, you can adjust the carousel layout and speed as well as whether you want to have any hover effects. With all of that said, let's see how this widget looks in the back end. Go to the Elementor sidebar and search for Client's Carousel. Here it is. Drag it over to the page. And this is what the widget looks like by default. There are three items in the carousel, and the options we have to customize it start with enabling the slider loop. It's on already, and it's what keeps the carousel items moving in a circle. You can disable it if you want. Then we have the Enable Centered Slides option. This one is set to No by default, but if you enable it, it will keep a slide always centered in the middle of the carousel. This option works best when you have multiple columns and some of them are only partially shown. Let me demonstrate. If I go down to the number of columns and switch the setting to 2, then go back up and center the slides, then one slide will be in the middle and the other will be cut off to fit the sides. Ok, I'll switch this back. Then we have the Enable Slider Autoplay option. Keeping it set to Yes allows the carousel to start moving as soon as the page loads. I'll keep it that way. And below we can adjust the slide duration. That's the amount of time that the slide is shown before being replaced by the next one. I'll set 4000 milliseconds for this. There. We also have the slide animation duration for setting how long the animated effect that makes the symbols seem to slide will last. I'll keep the default value which is 800 milliseconds. Then, the Enable Slider Navigation option allows us to have these arrows on the carousel sides. You can switch it to No and the arrows will disappear. Ok. We also have the Enable Slider Pagination option which gave us the three bullets at the bottom. I'll disable this too. After that, we have the image proportions. This option lets us pick the size of the images in our slider. You can try these settings out to see which one you like best. For myself, I'll leave it set to original as I already uploaded images in suitable dimensions. After that, there is the enable partial columns option. I'll switch it to yes so we can see. With that enabled, we get a new option below. And using it, we can adjust the width of the columns or items in the carousel. I don't plan on using this, so I'll set it back to no. Next, we can pick the number of columns we want to have in the carousel. You can pick anything from 1 to 8. I'll set 5. And that's also the number of items I plan on using, but more on that in a minute. For now, we have the columns responsive option. You can leave it set to predefined, but I'll switch to custom so I can manually adjust how many columns will be shown on each screen size. So, number of columns option above, this was for desktop screens. I'll set 5. And I'll do the same for the next setting, which covers MacBook screen width. Then, for the width of landscape orientation on tablets, I'll leave 3. And I'll do the same for the width of portrait orientation on tablets. Finally, the landscape on mobile phones will be 2. And the portrait on mobile phones will be 2 as well. Then, after that, we have the space between items option. That's for adjusting this space here. You can increase it using the slider, like so, or type in a new value. I'll set 30 pixels. Next, we have this option to enable boxed items. If we switch it to yes, we get this carousel layout where the items are in boxes with a background color, like so. I don't plan on using this, so I'll set it back to no. Then we have the hover type option. Right now it's set to none, but we can change that for one of these settings, such as change image which, when you hover over an item, makes the initial image switch with another one. You'd upload that other image within each individual item. Other than that, we have the opacity setting. With this one, the image gets a faint film over it. And we also have the scale setting, which makes the image zoom in a bit. There's also the horizontal rollover, so the image seems to move away horizontally. And it would make room for another image if you upload the second one. You do that for each item. Let me show you quickly. This is the first image, and this is the second that would replace the first when an item is hovered over. Ok. Finally, we have the vertical rollover, which works like the horizontal rollover, only along a different axis. 
So from all of these settings, I'll be using opacity for my design. And that brings us to the carousel items. I'll start by adding two more so that I'd have five in total. All right, there we are. Now let's look at the options using the first one. As we saw a second ago, this is where you can upload your client image for the regular carousel display. I'll add one now. Here it is. Insert media. And it appeared immediately in the carousel. Then we have this field for uploading a second image. But since I'm using the opacity hover type, any image I add here won't show up as my chosen effect simply tints the first image, it doesn't replace it. So moving on, my next option is the client title. You can replace it just by typing over the placeholder text, like so. Alongside that, we have the client link field, which we can use to add a URL that will make our carousel item clickable. And I've added the hashtag just as a placeholder to get the item to appear as if it's linked. Okay, now I will just go through the rest of these items and customize them, but you don't have to watch that part, so I'm skipping ahead. Alright, here we are. All my items have appropriate client images and titles. And this is what my carousel looks like. So, before we move on to the style tab, there's one more thing to look at here. And that is the developer tools. When we open it, there's just one option here. Switching its setting to yes will get it to display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode, so we can easily copy it for use elsewhere on our site. Okay, now on to the style tab. And the first section concerns the navigation style. We can see this is empty for me. That's because I disabled the navigation and don't need options for editing something I'm not using. I'll enable it now so we can go through the options for styling it. There. And back to style. Now we get all these options, starting with navigation position. The default setting puts the arrows on the inside of the carousel, but you can change that to the outside, or you can set them to be together. If you keep them that way, you can pick whether they will be aligned to the left or the right. Okay, I'll set the arrows back to inside as we go through the rest of these options. Then with hide navigation, we can pick below which screen width the navigation arrows will stop being visible. You have several options to choose from here. After that, we have the navigation vertical offset. It lets us move the position of the arrows up or down. And we can use the horizontal offset to move the arrows left or right. Then we have fields for uploading different navigation arrows. This is for arrow previous or left arrow. You can use an icon from the library or upload an SVG. And we have the same options for arrow next or the right arrow. Below that, we have settings for the normal navigation display and the display on hover. For starters, we can change the arrow color. It's very straightforward. Then we can change the arrow background color. I'll keep it for now. Then the navigation arrow size lets us increase the size of the navigation arrows. And the navigation arrow holder width lets us adjust the width of the space containing the arrow. To match that, we have the navigation arrow holder height to change the height of that space. As for the hover settings, we can set the arrow hover color if we want to make it different than the regular color. And we can also change the navigation arrow background color on hover, like so. Besides those, we have the option to enable hover arrow move. It's the animated effect we get when we hover. If we switch it to no, the arrows won't move on hover. But if you keep it set to yes, then you can have this subtle animation. Okay, that's it for navigation style. So I'll go back and disable the navigation as it's not part of my plan design. But while I'm here, I'll enable the pagination as pagination style is the next section awaiting us in the style options. And here are the bullets. Now let's see what we can do about styling them. Firstly, we can change the pagination position. It can stay on the inside or it can be on the outside of the carousel. Then we have the pagination offset for moving the bullets further away from the carousel. Below that, the normal settings where we have the color option, so we can easily change the bullet's color, and the hover settings where we have the active color. This lets us change the color for the bullet that's connected to the currently active slide, and the color changes from bullet to bullet as different slides become active. Then back to normal. We have the border type option for framing the pagination bullets. Once you select the type, you need to set the width and the color for your border to become visible. Ah, I overdid the width for this bullet size, let me reduce it. And there, we can see the border. So that's one possibility if you want to use it. Next, we have the pagination size, where we can increase the size of the bullets. 
And finally, we have the space between bullets if we want to spread them out. And that's that for the pagination. I'll disable it again as it's not part of my plan design. No? There we go. Now I can carry on with the rest of the style options, which includes the style section. In here, we can change the content alignment. We can choose between having it on the left, in the center, or on the right. I'll leave mine in the center. Then we can pick which title tag we want to use for the client title. I'll set H6 for this. Alongside this, we can change the title color if we want to. And the title typography as well. These options allow you to change the font family for the title. There is a large selection of fonts to choose from. We can also adjust the font size if we need to. There's also an option for changing the font weight, where you can pick any of these values to adjust the weight. Then we have the transform option for changing the title to, say, uppercase. And the style option if we want to make the title italic, for example. Then with the decoration, we can add a line under, over, or through the title. And finally, we can adjust the line height and letter spacing. And that's it. After the typography, we have the title hover underline. If we switch it to yes, then hovering over the title will cause an animated line to appear. If you decide to keep the line, you can pick if its duration will be short or long. The long one looks like this. It's noticeably slower. Okay, I'll set this back to default, which means the line will be gone now. Okay. Then we have the images margin bottom option. When we increase it, we can put more space between the images and the title. And that's all for the style section. The next one, box style, is for a different layout. I'll switch to that one briefly so we can go through the options for styling it. OK, enable boxed items, yes. And then we can go see what options there are for styling this layout. For one, we can change the background color. You can simply set whatever shade you like. Please note, I'm using PNG images with a transparent background. That's why the boxes are thoroughly covered by the new color. And, oops, and we have the item padding. When you change the values here, you can increase the box size as the padding around the content pushes the box outward. If you don't want to have the same space on all sides, click here to delink the fields and then you can change each side separately, like so. And those were the box style options. I'm going to disable this layout so I can get back the design I want. OK. And there's my client's carousel. I'll hit update to save it since I'm done. This is the design I wanted to make and I'm happy with how it looks. To finish up this tutorial, I'd like us to take one last look at the page we started from. The one with different examples of the showcases you can make with the client's carousel widget. Here, for example, is the design I chose to copy for this tutorial. This, as well as all the other examples on this page, are here to give you an idea of what you can do, to inspire you or to serve as a blueprint you can copy. Certainly, whatever you decide to do with this is up to you. The important thing is that you're now more familiar with the workings of the client's carousel widget, that you know what you can make with it and what options it offers, as well as how those options work, so you can easily start making your own carousels. We hope you found this tutorial on the client's carousel widget from the key add-ons for Elementor collection to be helpful. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching.